In this lesson, we talk about rotations, and a rotation is when a figure is rotated around a point. I know you're really not supposed to use the word in its own definition, but the only other word to use is the slang term that we use, which is called a turn. And rotations also form congruent figures. So here's an example of a rotation. It's being turned, and this way is actually called clockwise because it goes in the direction of the second, minute, and hour hand of a clock. And then this direction is called, whoops, same thing. If you go in the other direction, that's called counterclockwise. And I'm abbreviating CW and CCW for clockwise and counterclockwise because counterclockwise goes against the direction of a clock. So let's look at our first example, which is example one. You must rotate the puzzle piece 270 degrees clockwise about point P. So first we have to talk about what the degrees stand for. So when you're turning something clockwise or counterclockwise, it will usually tell you the degrees that you have to turn. So every time you make a turn like this, that's 90 degrees. So there's another 90 degrees. There's another 90 degrees. And you don't have to go 90. In, in high school, you'll go other degrees. You'll go 30 degrees or 60 degrees or 45 degrees. But for purposes of just doing the beginner rotations, we're going to do multiples of 90 because it's easy when we turn our paper. And then this would be a full 360. And that's going clockwise and obviously counterclockwise. It would be the same. So we're going to take our paper and we're going to do it 270 degrees. So here's 90 180, and then 270. Now, I want you to actually turn your paper with me. Don't sit there and watch me turn the paper because you're going to struggle a lot when we do rotations if you've never practiced turning your paper. So actually turn your paper with me. And then what I also need you to do is get a piece of scrap paper, nothing really that you care about, something you can get rid of. Um, and again, you have to do this or else you're going to uh, be confused when we go to class and actually try and do this if you're just used to watching me. So you've got your scrap paper and what I want you to do on your scrap is draw the puzzle piece that you see now because we turned this puzzle piece, this one right here, we turned it 270 degrees when we turned our paper. So what you see now is actually what it will look like after it's turned 270 degrees. So take it and it doesn't have to be anything really that fantastic, but it just has to be enough for you to get the general idea of what the piece looks like. Then when you're ready, we're going to turn our paper back, our, our worksheet, not our scrap paper. We're going to turn our worksheet back, and then we're going to circle the puzzle piece that looks like what we just drew. All right, let's find the choice that matches what we just drew, and it looks like it's letter C. All right, when you're ready, let's move on to example two. All right, this one's a little trickier because we're rotating on the coordinate grid. So again, follow along with me. Make sure you're actually doing the scrap paper and not just watching me. Uh, I've got a trapezoid. I'll plot the points. Negative 4, 2 is W. X is negative 3, 4. Y is at negative 1, 4, and Z is at negative 1, 2. So now I'm going to take my paper. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. Now if you think about when we were rotating before, 180 landed my paper upside down. So it doesn't matter which, dire which direction you go, whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, because 180 is going to land in the same spot. 180 has the exception of not needing to tell you the direction because the direction doesn't matter. So rotate your paper with me, 180 degrees. All right, so now grab that scrap paper again and actually do it. Don't just watch. If you just watch, you're going to really struggle in class. So I've got my scrap paper, right? Here it is. And I'm going to sketch a picture of the coordinate grid. 
And the reason I have to do that is because my picture was on the coordinate grid, so I need to know where the new points are going to land. So now here's what you do. You look at where the shape is currently. Right now it's in quadrant four, because remember the quadrants go one, two, three, and four. So right now it's in quadrant four, even though it's not really only because my paper is upside down, for the purposes of 180 degree rotation, it's here in quadrant four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw what I see in quadrant four. So Z, W, X, and Y. What I also have to do is pay attention to where the coordinates are. So I'm going to ignore the numbers on the side. So I'm ignore, don't actually scribble them out because I'm going to erase this in a minute. But I'm going to ignore those numbers and I'm going to look at where it is in quadrant four. So letter Z is at the point one, negative two, because in order to get to Z, I have to go right one, down two. W is at the point four, negative two because to get to W, I have to go right four, down two. X is at the point three, negative four, and Y is at the point one, negative four. So now I'm ready to turn my paper back. So I turn it back, and now I'm just going to copy what I wrote on my scrap paper. So Z is at one negative two. Oh, but actually I should call that Z prime because I already have a point Z. W prime is gonna be a four negative two. X prime is at three negative four. And Y prime is at one negative four. Now I don't have the primes in my scrap, but since I'm gonna throw it away anyway, it doesn't really matter. So there's my final image, and the question asks for the coordinates, and since I'm going to get rid of my scrap, I need to write them down on the worksheet. Z prime is at 1, negative 2. W prime is at 4, negative 2. X prime is at 3, negative 4. And Y prime is at... 1, negative 4. Alright, let's move on to one where we rotate around something besides the origin. Alright, this one's a little different because if you read the directions, we're not rotating around the origin, we're rotating around a specific point, which is going to be one of the vertices of the triangle that we draw. So pause the video, draw the triangle, and I'll explain to you what happens when you rotate around a specific point. Okay, so we're going to turn our paper just like we did, 90 degrees counterclockwise, goes like that, and we get our scrap just like we did in the other question. And you draw what you see, but it's not really important to pay attention to the quadrant because you're rotating it around point L. So um, what happens is point L doesn't move and the other points just kind of turn around point L. Point L is like the center of the universe and it doesn't go anywhere. So you sketch what you see But like I said, we're not concerned about the location of the coordinates. When you're rotating around a vertex, you only care about the distances between the points. So I don't care what the exact coordinates of this point are right now. I just care about the length of JL. We talked about congruent figures. Rotations form congruent figures. So since the distance from J to L is 5, it must always stay 5. The distance from J to K is 3, it must always stay 3. I'm not going to put the measurement of this diagonal here because I would need a ruler since it goes through the boxes, but know the, knowing the 3 and the 5 is good enough to create the triangle. Now this is a big difference from example 2 where we paid attention to the new coordinates. So you might want to annotate or highlight on your 
a worksheet about the differences between rotating around an origin and rotating around a vertex. So now w when you're ready, let's turn our paper back and now we're going to copy what we see, only it has to stay connected at point L. So L is staying right here, which means that J has to be five spaces to the left. So I'm going to go five spaces, which will land me right here, and that's the new J or J prime. Then I'm going to go three spaces up, and that's the new K or K prime. So this triangle right here is the new image. That's the image of the triangle. And notice that the triangle turned with a center of vertex L. So the coordinates of the image are J prime, which is at uh, negative four, negative three. Oh, I wrote over my coordinates. Uh, K prime is at negative four, zero, and obviously L stayed where it is at 1, negative 3. Now you don't have to use L prime because since there's only one point L, it's not going to get confusing about which L you're talking about. So you don't need to use L prime. It's just going to be J prime, K prime, and L. Now most of the rotating that we're going to do is going to be like the ones in example 2, which is rotating around the origin. Example 3, rotating around a vertex, is something that you'll do more in high school, but it's an introduction to it since we're talking about rotations. So we'll do that a little bit in class, but we'll focus heavily on rotating around the origin. Example 4 wants you to put it all together and do multiple transformations in one question. So ideally, I'd like you to try this one on your own. However, you're more than welcome to follow along with me. If you do try it on your own, you can fast forward through my explanation and just check your answers, or you can listen to how I do it. All right, so first thing I have to do is graph the rectangle. So A is at negative 3, negative 3. B is at 1, negative 3. C is at 1, negative 5. And D is at negative 3, negative 5. All right, then they want me to take this and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So I'm going to turn my paper 90 degrees clockwise. And then I've got my scrap paper. And I'm going to sketch what I see. Since I'm rotating around the origin, I need to pay attention to the quadrants. That's the key word is rotating around the origin. And now I'm going to graph the points where they look like they are. So A looks like it's at negative 3, 3. So I'm going to graph that here. And I'll write down that it's negative 3, 3. B looks like it's at negative 3, negative 1. C looks like it's at negative 5, negative 1. And D looks like it's at negative 5, 3. So there's my rectangle. And now I'm going to turn my paper back and plot those points. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to transfer my points. So uh, I'll start with A prime which is at negative 3, 3. B prime is at negative 3, negative 1. C prime is at negative 5, negative 1. And D prime is at negative 5, 3. The last thing it wants me to do is reflect it in the y-axis. So that means I'm going to count the boxes to the y-axis, and I can use that technique. So here we go. A is, or A prime is 3 to the left, so I'm going to go 3 to the right, and that's where A double prime is going to be. D prime is 5 to the left, so I'm going to go 5 to the right, and that's where D double prime will be. B prime is 3 to the left, so I'll go 3 to the right. B double prime. And C prime is 5 to the left, so I'll go 5 to the right. C double prime. Here's my final image, and they want the coordinates. 
So a double prime is at 3, 3. B double prime is at 3, negative 1. C double prime is at 5, negative 1. And D double prime is at 5, 3. All right, we've got one more example to do, and that's you figuring out what the transformation is. All right, last one. Um, they have a red figure, and it was cre and then they created the blue figure by doing certain transformations, and they kind of ghosted this image right here since we're first practicing this, so you could see what really happened. But what they're asking for is, what do you need to do if you this is the original and this is the image, and how do you get there? So the first thing that they kind of ghosted over here for us was a rotation. And you have to be specific, so the sequence of transformations is that the first thing is a rotation of, and it looks like 90 degrees, um, and if it turned that way, it must be counterclockwise. Right, because if I turn my paper, yeah, that's what it looks like. So first it was a rotation of count 90 degrees counterclockwise, then a translation um, one, two, three, four units up. All right, this lesson had a lot of things to keep track of, so I would hope that you highlighted or annotated some things. And if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.